gonna shove it. Yeah. He's gonna shove it. Christian Cage is one of those wrestlers that people have always seemed to love. He's a versatile guy, he's good in the ring, and he's good on the mic. He is also one of the final Attitude Era wrestlers who still wrestles on the big stage. And of course, his fame came from the WWE. He's in AEW nowadays, but AEW was not the first time that he moved to another company. He had a very successful 3S day in TNA long before it was fashionable to turn up there just to collect a paycheck. Christian's career in the WWF was not going to plan, despite some good crowd reaction mid-card title wins, his star had started to fade by 2005. He wanted to be in the main event. Christian decided he would not sign a new deal and surprisingly he left the WWE. He followed in the footsteps of childhood friend Rhino and the Dudley boys who had all finished up with WWE that year and they all headed off to TNA. It was happy families. At this point, TNA was desperately signing any ex-WWE person with name value, but the thing is, back then they mostly got their signings right and it improved their show. This was truly an exciting time for the small company. Christian was only 32 years old at the time of signing for TNA and it was regarded as a good signing for them, especially as he had a point to prove and he wanted to show the WWE that he could carry a company and run as a main event talent. A huge risk for Christian who entered Orlando in November 2005. Did he succeed in proving his point? Let's find out. Christian debuted for TNA at their Genesis pay-per-view. He was now named Christian Cage, which is a name he wrestled under on the indies at the start of his career. He was labelled by TNA as the biggest jump in their three year plus history. Christian instantly declared that he would be looking to become the world champion in TNA. The other Canadians of the company tried to offer him a place in their group, but Christian showed he'd be his own man in TNA and wanted to be a leader, not a follower. TNA did a good job with his entrance and his music. It makes him feel like a big deal and that's something Christian was definitely looking for in his new home. Cage is very keen to constantly tell everyone that he didn't come to TNA just because he got fired from the WWE. He actually wants to be here. His constant claiming that he'll be the next TNA world champion angers Monty Brown, who has been positioned as the number one challenger for a while in TNA. And of course, the heavyweight champion was a wild slap nuts of his. Double J, Jeff Jarrett. Christian instantly rubbed him the wrong way, telling him that every single person was bored of slap nuts. Christian originally used the nickname Captain Charisma, which he was known for in the WWE, and he ended most of his promo saying because that's how he rolls. After a month of running his mouth, he'd have his debut match against fellow Canadian Robert Roode. Despite having no backup, Christian certainly knew how to look after himself. It's somewhat unfortunate that Monty Brown suffered greatly with Christian arriving in TNA. Christian beat him on his first pay-per-view at Turning Point 2005. Christian is often remembered for his in-ring stuff, but his antics on the mic were so good they were overshadowing his in-ring stuff. As the feud with Slapnuts started to heat up, Christian cut a hilarious promo with Santa Claus where all of his presents are items that Jeff Jarrett would want. Type white pants from 1985, a blonde wig, and a Don't Piss Me Off t-shirt and said this isn't what a world champion should look like. <laughs> Don't piss me off! Wow, that's money! <laughs> Double C. Now whilst it felt like a title shot was imminent, it actually takes a while to get there. Jarrett and his troops are still too strong and Jarrett is now aligned with Monty Brown. Not only that, but Sting has also joined TNA properly. And Sting was the bigger star at the time, so this would prove to be a bit of a derail for Christian in his pursuit for the world title. Christian and Sting actually team up on pay-per-view, which is apparently the number one moment in TNA history. I'm not sure why. But eventually, Christian was named the number one contender and he was coming for slap nuts at the Against All Odds pay-per-view. Jarrett kept proclaiming that he was going to send Christian back to the mid-card where he belonged. Ironic, coming from the greatest Memphis mid-carder of all time. This was all taking place during the peak of Jeff Jarrett's powers as his reign of terror had people ripping out their short and curlies left, right and centre. Nobody could stomach this guy's dominance over the world title, which Jeff had held for 110 days at this point and he was on his fourth or fifth reign, depending on who you ask. Whilst their match together isn't exactly bad, it's hard to recommend any of the matches from this era. They all follow exactly the same routine. Interference, multiple ref bumps, kicks to the nutsack and the stroke. And that's usually what worked for Slappy, but not on this night. Christian kicked out of the guitar shot, powerbomb Gail Kim and hit Slappy with the Unpredia for the free. It took about four months for Christian to capture the title, which isn't too bad. He wasn't completely hot shotted and at the same time he didn't dump all over the TNA wrestlers. A nice touch with the winning celebrations is the crowd celebrating in the ring with Christian. It's a nice moment. He also cuts a scathing promo afterwards about all the people who have doubted his abilities. He was told for eight years that he wasn't big enough, he was too ugly and he didn't have it. Well now look at him. 
Christian says the belt is the most prestigious in this industry, and after 12 years of working his ass off, he'll finally go down with the past legends who held this belt. His first challenger for the belt would be the floundering Monty Brown. It feels a bit pointless considering Christian already beat him a couple of pay-per-views before. What's the capital of Thailand? Bangkok! Bangkok. <laughs> it's a refreshing main event though to have, but annoyingly most shows still end with Jeff Jarrett's face. Christian's extremely popular at this point, his promos have this sort of cheeky charm to them and it's a lot of fun just hearing him talk. Anyway, Monty Brown pounces him off the stage so Christian goes into this one injured. In the match, Christian kicks out of an Alpha Bomb and an F5 and wins with the Unpredia. And just like that, Monty Brown is pretty much done. And it's not Christian's fault, Brown just arrived a year too late as there were too many new stars in this company. Of course, the show goes off the air with slap nuts as usual. He says he's going to make Christian a transitional champion like Edge as he will be the next challenger. Then Scott Steiner arrives in TNA and he aligns with Jeff Jarrett. It felt like a new star arrived almost weekly at this point. Things took a dramatic and bizarre turn though. James Mitchell must have been hitting the white stuff again as he stalked Christian's wife. He was outside her house and following her around shops. It was like someone had really enjoyed the Undertaker and DDP story in 2001. Apparently this was just happening because James Mitchell was offended that Christian had disappeared from TNA for a month and had gone off to make movies. Why is James Mitchell so offended about that? Seemingly, this was a minor part in an action film called Shoot 'em Up. What a creative name for a film that is. It all leads to James Mitchell's number one henchman, Abyss, beating up Christian on his own front lawn and around his house. Abyss fighting Christian in a pool is a real throwback to the Attitude Era Diva matches. No, I'm kidding. It was a very refreshing main event scene for TNA after it had been dominated by slap nuts for so many years. Christian is so annoyed that he agrees to put the belt up in a cage match against Abyss. Somewhere in the back, a Memphis mid-carder is flipping dimes into his nappy of anger at being jumped in the queue. Christian tries his best in this match to really make the cage match look brutal. He takes a powerbomb into the cage more than once. Christian hits a sweet diving tornado DDT and of course an insane frog splash off the top of the cage. I don't know if it's just me, but a steel cage match just doesn't feel complete without someone doing a cage dive. Abyss throws the ref into the cage to make Christian fall off the top which leads to Christian hitting a sunset flip powerbomb into the tax. Christian wins a fun match with the Umpredia into the fun tax. Ultimately, Abyss has the last laugh when he chokes out Christian and steals his title belt. Abyss is an idiot though and truly believes that he is the world champion now. Cage says that nobody wants to see Shrek as the heavyweight champion and this leads to another pay-per-view match, this time a full metal mayhem match for the title. They ain't playing in this sacrifice pay-per-view either. Christian is suplexed onto a ladder. He also misses a frog splash onto the ladder. He's getting destroyed. He's yanked off the top through some tables. Christian gives Abyss the Imperilia on the ladder and he gives Mitchell a Uranagi on the tax. It ends with Christian climbing the ladder and hitting a frog splash on Abyss for a table. Christian finally has his belt back. He might as well have not bothered. Because although the first six months of Christian and TNA were impressive, I can't say the same for the next few months. Christian drops the belt through shenanigans to slap nuts on the next pay-per-view. This was Earl Hebner getting involved in yet another screwjob angle. The fans dumped their nappies of anger and threw them at slap nuts. Nobody could stand this anymore. Christian lost an upper contenders match to Sting and it just kept getting worse. This is the Christian is Sting's bitch storyline. Essentially, Christian wants to be his best friend and supports Sting's quest to beat Jarrett for the belt. A real backward step after Christian was a great part of the show. Christian said he originally didn't trust the Sting's intentions in TNA, but now he can see that Sting came back to make TNA the greatest wrestling promotion in the world to pave the road for guys like Christian. The whole time, Christian sounds like an absolute dork. The crowd are now booing Christian. Steiner's in Jarrett's corner too, which leads to some amazing promos from Steiner on Christian. Steiner vows to send Christian back to Mexico North. Sting finally began to trust Christian enough and allowed him to have his back at Hard Justice. Christian did everything he could during the match to make the match fair by taking out Scott Steiner and hitting Slap Nuts with a chair. But randomly at the end of the match, when Sting was about to dive on Slap Nuts, Christian decked Sting with the guitar. A really nice but completely random spot as Christian turns heel after helping Sting the entire match. It would later be justified that Cage changed his mind about Sting during the match as he felt Sting didn't deserve it as he didn't have the passion during the match. Christian was now a heel who claimed that he was God. Christian's friend Rhino took offence to that line and his actions. Christian tried to shut him up by bringing up all their history where Christian had genuinely been a friend to Rhino. Christian asked Rhino to hit him with a chair, which Rhino refused to do. He moved on to bring up that he's become a far bigger star than Rhino and Rhino is just jealous. Rhino starts punching him, which leads to Christian giving him a one-man concerto. This is a feud that has a lot of potential as there's a lot of history here as it's two guys who are friends so they could come up with some good stuff. They also have lots of photos from their childhood. 
Christian is one of those guys that can do good work, heal or face. It's his mannerisms, he can make you hate him. This feud with Rhino will continue with a pay-per-view match at No Surrender 2006. It's actually just a normal singles match, but it's filled with weapon usage because this is TNA. They do a concussion storyline with Rhino after Christian gives him an implant DDT on the ramp, but Christian shows no mercy and finishes him off with an umbrella on a chair. Kurt Angle joins TNA. Christian faces Samoa Joe for the title on Impact, which you'd think is something they'd want to save for the pay-per-view. At this point, they start highlighting the fact that Christian has never been pinned and has never submitted in TNA, which is why it's appropriate that he faces the undefeated Samoan submission machine. Christian's unable to regain the world title after Rhino interferes in the match and gives Samoa Joe the victory. They will meet again at Bound for Glory in an 8 mile street fight. No, Eminem isn't here, but it is in Detroit, the home of the war machine. I think they missed a trick here, not having Christian do some Slim Shady impressions. He did raps in the WWE. The promo package is a rip-off version of Lose Yourself playing. This is another good match full of hard-hitting stuff. Who would have ever thought that Christian Cage succeeded in such a hardcore environment? Cage locks Rhino in a straitjacket but can't land the concerto. Rhino recovers and hits a Rhino driver off the apron and through a table. Rhino is able to gore Christian through the table. The Unpredator on the table doesn't get the job done. Christian covers Rhino in trash and smashes the trash into Rhino time and time again and that is how it ends. They have one other major match together in a barbed wire cage match. This match is used to promote TNA's move to prime time. Christian takes his licks in this barbed wire match and the crowd are absolutely loving it. Rhino gives Christian a big time TKO on top of chairs. Unfortunately for Rhino he gores Christian out the cage and this gives Christian the win. I can't help but feel that these matches were really fun and hardcore but the story was lacking a bit. I would have expected a bit more stuff to be used from their past to really push the boundaries in this feud. It's a really nice feud overall, it just could have been better. As the feud wraps up, that wraps up Cage's first year in TNA. It's a pretty good first year and it was surprising how hardcore Christian Cage became. Despite winning the world title once in his first year, I don't feel like he quite established him as a main event guy as it was clear that people like Sting, Slapnuts, Jern Angle were seen as a bigger deal at the time. Quite honestly, they overshadowed him. Following my comments, Christian must have been sulking because he decided to hire some backup to improve his chances. Tyson Tomko debuted with TNA. He had previously been associated with Christian in the WWE too. He was the problem solver. Christian felt more confident now and started making world title challenges again. He won the belt in a triple threat at Final Resolution 2007 with a frog splash to the back of Sting. Christian becomes a two-time NWA Heavyweight Champion. I hope he's ready to make some defences because there's some big hitters in TNA now and it doesn't get any harder than his first challenger being Kurt Angle. They decide to go down the route that Christian has a special advisor and Kurt Angle's randomly trying to find out if it's Bill Goldberg or Brock Lesnar. This goes on for a few weeks and I wouldn't normally associate Scott Steiner with the word letdown, but yeah, Steiner is the special advisor. That is a letdown compared to Goldberg or Brock Lesnar in TNA. It's interesting, with Jarrett taking a break it feels like Christian takes up the cowardly heel role, except he's less annoying than Jarrett. Shockingly, Christian Cage is able to beat Angle on pay-per-view, which might surprise you considering Angle is pretty new to the company. I guess that's what happens when someone hits you in the throat with a pipe. Christian's next problem was that his two big men hated each other. Steiner thought Tomko was a redneck and Tomko said Steiner was a loudmouth. Christian was deluded and thought they were all an inseparable happy family and he dubbed them the Christian Coalition. Steiner was constantly in an uncontrollable rage. At the same time, Tomko was the number one contender, but Christian kept stringing him along. Samoa Joe is the next challenger at Destination X 2007, which unfortunately doesn't have much of a story other than Christian is a dick. This one was booked like a complete afterthought, and then Christian had possibly his best TNA match against him. Joe isn't undefeated at this point, but strangely, Christian still is. It has to be one of the weirdest undefeated streaks ever. It's hardly ever mentioned, Christian has lost loads of matches, but they've all been multi-man matches where he didn't end up taking a pin or submit. Christian wins the match. There's a big War Games match coming up now, Christian's coalition taking on Kurt Angle's men. Christian is worried about Angle and Joe, so he has the Monster Abyss added to his group. He persuaded Abyss to do it by saying that he could offer Abyss family. AJ Styles was also seen hanging around with Christian a lot of this time. Seemingly he was too wacky and had nothing better to do. It turns out that Christian had been persuading all of these guys to back him up by promising each of them separate title shots. It's a pretty compelling storyline because he's handing out so many title shots it's hard to see how he can escape from the situation. Tomko is the one who's most annoyed about the situation. Angle and Christian's side both have an argument over who gets Tomko. Tomko ends up joining Christian's side even though it makes no sense because he doesn't even like Christian, he thinks he's annoying and he keeps denying him a title shot. The Lockdown War Games match doesn't go well for the Christian Coalition because Slapnuts returns with his little guitar and hits Abyss. At least Jarrett doesn't get the pin. 
This means the Stinger is the next title challenger. Abyss keeps losing matches, so Christian Cage kicks him out of the coalition. They kill the monster with chair shots and a barbed wire baseball bat, and finally Christian hits the concerto into barbed wire. The following week, Christian and his troops attack Kurt Angle in the same brutal manner. Christian is trying to eliminate his challengers. Christian often teams with AJ Styles around this time. They have this really weird dynamic like a father and son. AJ cuts really bad promos like a little child. It's like he's turned into a complete idiot. He really looked up to Christian and went along with everything he says. Christian is a master manipulator. It's like they had forgotten that AJ had already held this belt multiple times before all of this. It's now determined that Christian must defend the belt in a triple threat. At the sacrifice pay-per-view, he has to face Sting and Kurt Angle. And the match ends in a bit of a screwy way of Christian being pinned by Sting whilst Angle taps Sting out. It's ruled in the end that Angle has won the world title. So as usual, Christian lost the match without being pinned or submitted. The weirdest undefeated streak continues. Angle tries to celebrate his title the next week with the crowd loudly chanting, We want Christian. Then Cornette changes his mind and strips Angle of the belt. Behind the scenes, TNA had a little falling out with the NWA. The NWA had stripped Christian of the belt behind the scenes. Even though Christian defended the physical belts, the NWA didn't recognise it. A tournament was created to crown the first ever TNA heavyweight champion. Tomko seemingly really enjoyed Christian losing the belt. He suggested Christian go back to tag matches. Christian is adamant he's not a tag team wrestler. Jim Cornette is really not a fan of how Christian conducts his business. Cornette gives AJ a match against Tomko. This causes AJ to throw a tantrum like a little baby. Christian is still technically friends with both guys at this point, but this kind of ends their friendship because Christian helps AJ win. Tomko is looking for Christian backstage, who is hiding behind a desk and pretending to be a receptionist. Tomko notices him and he's about to throttle him, but Motormouth Christian talks his way out of it by bringing up how he gave Tomko his wrestling career. Somehow, he keeps managing to talk Tomko around. Cornette puts Christian in a match against the returning monster Abyss. This is pretty big due to what Christian did to Abyss two months earlier, and Christian has to win the match to get another title match. Unfortunately, Abyss is an idiot and he gets himself DQ'd. At Slammiversary, Christian took some pretty big falls off the ladder, but ultimately, his title match is won by Angle as he's crowned the first TNA Heavyweight Champion. Kurt Angle's first title defence is this really cool but random match. It's a triple threat against Rhino and Christian, but the match runs almost the entire length of Impact. Officially, this match runs for 43 minutes. Somehow, this crowd are hyper for the whole thing. That shows the kind of guys that we've got here. Abyss chases Christian away from the match with the Coalition attacking Abyss backstage. Christian returns to the ring, almost stealing a pin after Rhino Gore's ankle through a table. Ultimately, a combination of the Wildcat Chris Harris and Abyss take Christian away from the action and it's eventually won by Angle. The Christian Coalition, which is now just Tomko and Styles and Christian, continue to hang around with each other. Christian and AJ are completely insane and Tomko seems to be the only sane person in the building. Christian says he's the only star in TNA. AJ asks him if he's got star quality. Christian tells him, don't worry son, you have potential and AJ jumps up and down giddy with happiness. AJ has daddy issues and Christian's encouraging it. Every week it's the same idiotic stuff. I can't believe the phenomenal AJ Styles has resorted to this. It seems it wasn't just Monty Brown who was affected by Christian in TNA in a negative way. I'm getting distracted, but I'm sorry, it's a completely insane and it needs its own video. WWE told TNA they needed to stop using the Captain Charisma nickname, so instead they started calling him the Instant Classic. Christian ends up in the mid-card and he's very unhappy about this as he has to face Chris Harris. He rants to Jim Cornette saying he doesn't know who Chris Harris even is. And now we have Chris Harris? Well, I got a quick question for you. Who in the hell is Chris Harris? Chris Harris is going to be a bona fide superstar just from breathing the same air as the champ. You are going to have to put your biggest name in a case you forgot. It's me, the instant classic Christian Cage, back in the main event. You asked a question, I'm going to answer it. You want to know who Chris Harris is? Chris Harris. Oh. Braden Walker. And I'm going to knock your brains out. And not to dump on Harris, because I love Harris, but it's a downgrade for Christian. Interestingly, Abyss does manage to beat Christian in an Abogga Tenders match, but as usual, Christian is not pinned or submitted. It's a first blood match. It's a small measure of revenge for Abyss, but Christian is shoved out the way by Angle. It feels like Christian has been downgraded. I'd say that's about right. Now back to talking about winning streaks. Christian's winning streak finally comes to an end, and that incredible moment would be at Bound for Glory 2007 against Samoa and Joe. Christian's streak lasted 23 months, compared to Samoa Joe's, which is 18 months. I think it's because Joe was dominant throughout his streak, whereas Christian snuck a lot of his wins or kept out of the way when his team lost a match. Sure, Christian won plenty, but he didn't feel dominant. 
Still incredibly interesting though, because Joe Streak is the only one to ever be mentioned. The Muscle Buster and the Kokida Clutch finally make Christian tap out. Now away from the title, one of my favourite things that Christian does in TNA is his mini feud with Kaz. Kaz was a guy who TNA saw something in, but he was a pretty blank slate personality wise. It turned out he and Christian had excellent in-ring chemistry and they had a couple of bangers, most notably on pay-per-view in a ladder match. In a really classy move, Christian actually put Kaz over in this ladder match. Christian's final year in TNA was easily his worst. He hardly even felt like a main event guy anymore. He spent large parts of the year directionless and in filler matches. AJ Styles and Tomko started hanging around with world champion Kurt Angle and they helped him win matches. Seemingly they wanted to be closer to the world title. But they also still liked Christian. It created a conflict of interest because Christian and Angle didn't like each other and didn't want to be on the same team. Christian challenged for Angle's belt at Final Resolution 2008 and shockingly AJ Styles got involved and attacked Christian giving Angle the win. Soon Tomko and Stars would completely leave Christian and instead form the Angle Alliance. I'm pretty sure Tomko never liked Christian anyway. Christian was on his own and honestly you can pretty much skip the rest of his TNA run. Well, excluding the last month. He was involved in a bunch of random matches with no story. But when Booker T joined TNA, business picked up. Booker didn't really like any of the young guys. He would regularly run them down, which Christian took offence to. Booker seemed to give Christian a truckload of jokes to crash into him with. This feud also delivered one of my favourite TNA promos of all time with Christian comparing Booker T to Lil John and doing funny impressions. We honestly didn't see enough of this funny stuff in his free estate. Can you ask me a question, Lil John? Yeah! yeah I'm serious. You're serious? Okay! Christian, what? The TNA frontline was fighting the main event mafia. Christian didn't want to join either side though because he felt like he related to both sides. The young guys were ultimately too dorky for him. Both Booker T and AJ were trying to get him to choose a side. He could have fitted in either faction. He refused to side with either side, even when asked point blank. Cornette made the three of them have a triple threat match at Bound for Glory, and I just really loved this match for some reason. It's a nice blend of styles. It was sure better than a Christian Cage and a pole match. Booker T wins an incredibly fun triple threat match where all three guys worked really well together. Find and check this one out because it's not one that's brought up very often. The time finally comes when Christian's hand is forced to make a decision at Turning Point 2008. Booker T faces him and puts his Legends title up, but if Christian lost the match, he would be forced to join the main event Mafia. And lose he did. Christian just couldn't seem to get a result against a Booker man. But Christian didn't join the Mafia. Kurt Angle revealed he'd heard rumours that WWE had made Christian an offer, and he thinks Christian is going to accept that offer. Christian is punking out on both the Mafia and the young guys, so the Mafia give him a going away present, an ass kicking. Christian was done with TNA, ending his three-year stay. Christian was back on WWE telly three months later. They put him on ECW. I think the WWE viewed Christian as slightly better when he returned. He had two heavyweight title reigns in the end. Neither of them were exactly good, but it's possibly more than he would have got if he'd stuck around. Christian Cage in TNA was a good thing, as he was one of the first people to make the jump, and he showed that wrestlers could have a career away from the WWE. He probably encouraged more wrestlers to make the jump in the future. Year 1 in TNA was excellent, he had the crowd behind him as a babyface, great matches and promo and strangely a lot of hardcore stuff. Year 2 was also good, but wow, what a strange undefeated streak. The stuff with Kurt Angle, Stars and Tomko started getting a bit silly, and you could see that Christian was getting a bit bogged down by Year 3 of all the stars TNA were able to sign. I still think it's a damn shame Christian was unable to capture the TNA heavyweight title, just the NWA one twice. The main thing to take away from this video was that Christian was the star we all needed when the reign of terror was driving us all nuts. He was something fresh and completely new which changed up the main event scene. Christian Cage would return to TNA in 2012 for one night as he announced the number one moment in TNA history. That tag match he did with Sting at Final Resolution. A strange choice, but I guess it might be seen as a moment that TNA became a more serious contender with two big stars here. Christian Cage looked like he wanted to be any place but the Impact Zone in 2012. TNA were only able to get him as they agreed to let Ric Flair do some WWE stuff in return. Christian also wrestled five matches for Impact in 2021. He captured the Impact World title from Kenny Omega on AEW telly, which is all just a bit mad. At the age of 50, he's still going strong in AEW where he's considered one of the top heels in the company and he's also the current TNT champion. People are just shocked by how good this guy still is. How much longer will Christian Cage go on, I don't know, but I'm sure he's pretty happy to have Edge in AEW with him. And he deserves it because he's made us all happy by beating Slapnuts and being associated with the most fondly remembered period of TNA. He's an instant classic, and if you don't agree with that, I'll recycle you like plastic. 